Now, President, what are we at here? Well, we're uh, just the launch tonight is a Shade or Shade project, which has been uh, run um, for in be on behalf of Westport Adolescent Advisory Service, Rockrose House, Cancer Support, and the Westport Lions Club, who support local charities. Now, what are you going to do? Well, we're hoping to get as many eligible people as possible who are willing to shave or shade their um, hairy bits, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the hairy bits. Yes, <laughs> exactly, and uh, we'll have a shave off then in May, on the 9th of May. The, sorry, the, oh, the 8th of May, hmm. Friday. Oh, yeah, right, that was a misprint. Right, okay. Now, where is it going to be held? In the Castle Court. In the Castle Court of Town. Okay, this will be up to date, yeah. Have you many volunteers? We have, um, Kathy, how many have we got? We have 15, 20. 20 27. 27. 27 so far. So far. And counting. And counting. and counting and looking for more, of course. You're involved in this talk, are you? Um, peripherally, yeah. You're involved in everything. Go on, tell us more. Yeah, I'm Kathy, the chair of the, of the project. I'll and I'll tell everybody as I, I delegate my I'm just helping them. speech specialist, so whoever wants to talk about it. Yeah, yeah Kathy is the lady. Uh, Kathy is. Is our, is You're the director. Our, is our no, I'm the director, yeah. Our our manager. And what are you expecting to do? every year. Right. How do you do this? You, you, we sponsor, people sponsor them, is it? Or yeah, is yes, it? whatever they would like to sponsor. Anything it, from 5 to 100 to 100. And have you apps or online or anything like that? Uh, not at the moment, but that is... We're working on that. Working They're on working on that. that. We do have yeah. a Facebook page for on the Westport Line, <laughs> and all the details will also be on that. Will it be like the Ice Bucket Challenge? Uh, yeah. Well, the, not really. The Challenge, do you think? Will it be yeah, as big be as that? It would be better, Jock says. Yeah, well, it would be better. Uh, that's a fine looking beard you have there. That's not too bad. That must be valuable, is it? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't come off now for any, just any cause, but uh, I met Joe from the uh, Joe Ring. He asked me would I do it. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? Will you do this? Will you do him? For this call, so I said, yeah, why not? Absolutely. This is the man. This is the man that raised. Go on there and see, can have it inspected and see what it looks like. No, no, it's just real. It's real. It's real. Don't put your fingers over there, Joe. Baby, that's what I like. Yeah. That's <laughs> She fell in love with him. He was in, he was in one morning here and I was <laughs> fell in love with him. And, and, he, and he overheard me telling him that I fell in love with him. And uh, he's not my type normally, but the beard, I don't even want you to shave it. It's going to be a great time. I know. Uh, That's all, Joe. Joe, is there, is there any chance you might do a transplant? Is there? <laughs> but um, on, behalf of the, on, be, on behalf of the Lions Club, and um, if you don't mind, can I say a few words? On behalf of the Lions Club, especially the Lions Club, and everybody here, all you people who have given up your time to do this, thank you very much. Because not everybody has the time, and it's it's a great cause. Mm. And even so I want to especially thank Darren Cawley for two reasons. Number one is he asked me to ask his wife to allow him to grow a beard, mm. and I said I was terrified. He says no way I'm going to do that. But <laughs> I met her yesterday quietly. I said to her, she said, if you move in as a substitute for the next two months. Uh, <laughs> Sharon's allowed to do it. So in that cause, How Darren, that? I'm the I, I, that's the sacrifice. I, I, am, I am the substitute. The, um, the only cause I can talk about here really is cancer. It's the only one I know. And if Seamus Moore and I is here as well, maybe he might say a few words on, on the Rock Rose House scenario as, as to where the money is going. On, on, on that side of it, the, the, the Lions Club have stated their case. Is there a man here tonight going to state the case for the... He's in Dublin. He's in Dublin. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get him again, Ali. Yeah, he's going to come again. Oh, but, uh, Murphy. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. But exactly. you know, it's a it's a fantastic cause, and it's um, two things happened. I mean, I was asked to give a hand at this, and I absolutely had no problem whatsoever in, in, in doing that. Because last year, last year, um, I was one of these people, Ali, that thought that um, cancer happens to somebody else, and it happened to me this time last year, and it was it was a hard road. And all I say is that. Uh, I came out of it, but there's another side of this alley that nobody that nobody realises, and it's that does aftercare need it? Because when you when you suffer from cancer and you come out of it, you become very vulnerable, and you become very lonely, and it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's not something you can explain easily. But there's 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 a centre over there in Castlebar called Rock Rose House, and um, it is a place that many of you pass every day. It's across from the hospital, and a lot of you don't know what happens there. But I took a course or two in there to build up my confidence again and build myself up. And this is where this bit of money will be going, Ali, for 
the part that the, part of the, that the people want to do for the cancer side of it. It's going for the funding of Rock Rose House. So what did it feel like when you were told you had cancer at first? Well, it was an absolute total shock, because as I said, it happened to somebody else. I, I was a man that kept very fish, kept very well. Looked after myself, never smoked in my life, and to be told you cancer of the tonsillar atrocious. It took a few days for it to sink in, but when it did, it was horrendous. Cancer is a dirty word, and I, when you hear the word cancer, the second word you think of is death. And that's what I, that's, that's. And did you get to accept the fact you had it? But it comes to stage after a few days where you have absolutely no choice but to accept the fact that you have it. And you have to get on with it. And you're just taken on as a battle. And it is, that's what it is a battle. You go into it as a game and you take it on and you fight it. How did you find the treatment? I found the treatment horrendous. I found the people who were dealing with me fantastic. Uh, I met many, many great people. It's a journey I went on. Uh, I wouldn't swap for the world. <laughs> one of the most wonderful journeys I went on. I certainly don't want to go on it again. But I met some wonderful people. A lot of them aren't here today. A lot of them are. And there are comforts out there now, and there are treatments out there now. The amount of people that survive that cancer is phenomenal. And for all the, all the people out there suffering at the moment and who are going through this, remember, tomorrow is a better day. You will get through it. And how did you face death with the possibility of death? Death's never frightened me. Death never doesn't frighten me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've got a theory that the next one is a better one. Uh, this one's okay. I'm not in a hurry to get there. But uh, I, death, death never fails. I never thought of it. I've never thought of it before. Didn't think of it since. Not thinking of it now.